All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board and Finance Committee. This evening, we are going to be talking to the Administration School Committee of Sunderland Elementary School and Frontier Regional. Uh, that's scheduled at 640, so we got a couple things that we can get done real quick. So at this time, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes of March 7th. I make a motion we approve the minutes. Second. Okay, a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of March 7th, 2022. All those in favor, please, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, next up, Mr. Jeff, we have a, an appointment. Yes, uh, the appointment of Miss Catherine Power to the Cultural Council. Um, uh, we have uh, an email from both Ms. Power and uh, Mr. Lacey, the chair of the Cultural Council, um, supporting her, her desire to be appointed. All right, so at this time we have a uh, letter of interest from Catherine Power to join the Sunderland Cultural, Cultural, Cultural Council. Entertain a motion. Uh, motion. I second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded for the appointment of Catherine Power to the Sunderland Cultural Council. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Thank you. Congratulations, Catherine. Nice to see you back in town and uh, getting right, right back and right back involved. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, you want me to? I have something that I might know. be able to. I don't know which clock to look at because they're all different. So yeah, I didn't. I, I go to one, yeah. the David Pierce uh, timepiece isn't exactly right, but that's it's not, almost that's right. That's not mine. That's a newer one. Is it? Yeah. Wow. All it's right, got Jeff, a date got? on it now. Um, we. Got the we did the procurement for the garage road sidewalk and we got the bids back um, and I am recommending that we award the contract to Gomes Construction. They were the low bidder. Um, their bid came in at thirty three thousand one hundred twenty five dollars. Thirty one. Thirty three thousand. One hundred twenty five. Pretty close to the top, huh? Yep, very close. Uh, they're the ones doing the sidewalk on 116, so I think they were they had mobilization covered anyway. So we I think we're getting a pretty good deal, and that's to replace about 800 feet of sidewalk um, from the inner from where the new sidewalk is going to end on 116 up to the curve um, mm -hmm. along Garage Road, and then a painted crosswalk across the. And you're also going to put a California berm. Yes. On also, right? Yep. Good. And and it's just going to be asphalt. Yes. Not cement. Correct. Good. Placing the asphalt. Yep. All right. So do you like a uh, a motion to proceed with Gomes Construction for the uh, garage road sidewalks? Please. Motion. Second. What a well-oiled machine. I'm gonna miss them in a couple of months. You don't have to. Know. <laughs> we'll have to break another one in. Right. You've been at this a little while, you know. Dave, Dave can watch and he can he can call in with a, the new member and call I'll have pointer. to text me. Yeah, te yeah text them. <laughs> Your turn. Motion. Text them. There you go. All right. So we have a motion made and seconded to accept the uh, bid of Gomes Construction for the sidewalk insulation repair along Garage Road. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. Thank you. Darius, you ready? I'm ready. The uh, Verizon time thing says 640, so let's shoot. All right, so Shelly Breda um, is online, and she's going to do the lion's share of the talking about the numbers and such. So. Okay, let's do it. <clears throat> hi there. Uh, this is a little bit 
bit strange to be remote and have so many people there. So I hope that everything comes through fine. Uh, I am going to share my screen so that you can see the presentation. Did that come through? Yep, we can see it. We can see okay. it. Okay, so I'll go a little bit um, through the budget process quickly, just so that anyone who is not familiar with how we prepare the budget has that info as the first step of the process. Uh, so we do look to build a needs-based student center budget that's also fiscally responsible. The first piece that we look at after talking with key stakeholders and administration is to look at the uh, level services. So all existing staffing and programs that are in FY22 get automatically carried over to FY23. And then we look at new initiatives. So whether that's new staffing, um, new programs, new needs for materials, uh, anything along those lines, we look at those pieces as well. Uh, so we take a three year history of our existing expense accounts. So we look at our budget compared to our actuals for all of our expenses and fluctuate up or down based on the needs. So there may be instances where we have to increase, for example, uh, across district wide, all five schools this year, we are increasing our technology lines based on actual software programming that the schools are currently using. Um, and then we make adjustments here or there, whether we can bring another line down or if we're just adding other funds in to cover expenses that are currently in place. Uh, so we also put in um, contractual and non-contractual wage adjustments. Uh, that would be for our unions and our non-union personnel. So anyone who is uh, a teacher or an IA, we had placeholders in this year in the budget because they were in negotiations when the budget process began. Uh, and then we also look at support staff and central office. So anyone in the building that's considered support, we build in raises for them as well. Uh, that would be cafeteria, custodial, uh, principal support staff, so secretaries, anyone along those lines, and then central office and administration as well. We build in those placeholders. So one of the hardest things that we have to face when we're building the budget is how we balance level services, which does not equate to level funding because of all of those pieces that I just described. Uh, with the, the wages especially, um, our salaries make up a significant part of the budget, but then we also have to consider new needs for the next upcoming school year. Uh, and then we look at other budget drivers that really are out of our hands. So special education expenses, transportation, out of district placements, or consultants that we have to bring in to meet the needs of special education students. And we also look at our revolving funds. So for Sunderland Elementary, that's school choice, uh, school lunch, early childhood, and the special education tuition and program. So we have to look at the anticipated revenue coming into all of those and make sure that we have enough funds coming in to continue to pay the expenditures uh, that we're planning on for the next year. So we presented a first draft in January with all of those factors taken into consideration. We came in at a 6.31% increase. Uh, that was in part for some increase in wages for custodial needs, as well as a nurse leader position. Those are existing positions in the budget already. They just haven't been fully funded in the last several years, so we're increasing those line items. Uh, we also had an increase to technology accounts, special education, transportation, and employee separation costs. Um, the draft excluded two new requests because the number was so significant at 6.31% that we talked about the need for uh, increasing staffing, which was to add a full new position, a school adjustment counselor, and also increasing the occupational therapy position that's currently part-time at the school. Uh, we did talk about those pieces with school committee, but they were not included in that 6.31% increase for our first draft. So school committee asked administration to go back and uh, do some additional work because we knew we couldn't come in at that percentage point. They also talked about requesting that the town pay the employee separation costs for next year. Um, that is something that the town has done twice now, at least I'm aware of in my tenure over the last three to four fiscal years. Um, so we pulled that off as the first step in the second draft. 
and then we also moved an additional twenty thousand dollars in wages to a revolving fund that was moved to our early childhood revolving fund based on anticipated enrollment. we thought that we could place another it'll almost cover one of the ah leas for the early childhood so that second draft came in at four point five eight percent our school committee still felt like that was high and asked us to do some additional work we talked about in the february meeting how we could bring that number down and the primary result was that we needed to find another funding source to move additional funds off of the general fund so looking again at our revolving accounts there was nothing that we were ready to cut from the budget because all of this budget this year is level of services so existing staffing existing programs existing expense accounts with those minor adjustments that i mentioned a couple paragraphs up there things that were already in place at the school so we didn't feel like we wanted to make any cuts and uh proceeded ahead with the final draft that we're presenting today of an increase of 3.59 percent we did that by moving an additional thirty thousand dollars onto the school choice revolving fund um, and the, the decision around that was twofold one uh, we feel like we're going to have some additional special education increment claims that are not accounted for so that's going to give us additional revenue and also uh, we had put in a placeholder for uh, 18.5 before we knew that the town was going to cover that water heater repair so we were already planning on spending an additional almost 19,000 to cover that emergency that happened over the last couple months so with the town uh, being willing to cover that uh, with ARPA funds for us thank you very graciously doing that we were able to put this expense back on even though we're exceeding what we had planned for uh, we feel like the school choice fund is in good shape which i am going to give you a snapshot of the anticipated balance at the end of next year uh, so we will be presenting the 3.59 percent increase to the school committee tomorrow uh, for approval at our public hearing uh, and then another note is that we will spend another roughly 775,000 of school choice and revolving fund and grant money to fully fund the school's budget, which is just shy of $4 million. Are there any questions on that before I keep going or should I just keep proceeding? I, I <clears throat> you have a question? No questions right now. No. So, so ju just a couple questions um, in, in one is about the lunch over the last few years we've been trying to take care of um, allowing the lunch program to be self-sustaining again have we reached that level we're now we have yeah um, I can show you that revolving account Tom what we're projecting for our balance and here I'll skip over some of this other stuff um, but the, the school lunch account there you can see on the top of page two of, or page three perhaps uh, we are going to start the year with about fifty four thousand next year and that is because in the current year we are holding on to as much funds as we can as a reserve to help build up that account again uh, so you can see there our expected revenue and our expected expenditures next year should be a wash and we are will hold that 54,000 as things are projected right now at the end of next year for additional repairs or emergency needs that come up. Um, all of our schools, the equipment is very old. A lot of it um, dates to when the buildings were built uh, and we are asking for warrant money or looking at other internal sources to try to fund some of those things. So our goal would be to use some of that money to do some projects, but also save some in reserves. Uh, the lunch has been free uh, it was free this year and it was free part of the year before so we have a lot of students taking advantage of breakfast and lunch at the schools and there may be a point where USDA decides that they're not going to move forward with free lunches for all and we'll go back to the free and reduced lunch system that we had previously but we still expect that our numbers will be um, sufficient to at least fund the expenses for next year so 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 i guess my question in in is just understanding the the equipment in the kitchen is is that if that when that has to be replaced or maintained is that done through the budget or is that done through the lunch budget 
Does it's not mean? done through the general fund budget. We do not have money built in outside of buildings, general repairs, which in Sunderland, you guys know this story is it's not a huge budget for an old building that has a lot of repairs. So if something comes up, um, I can remember, I think it was last year or perhaps even the year before we had to replace something on an emergency. I think it might have been the walk in. Um, or something along those lines. And so we had to find funding sources to make that emergency repair. Part of it got paid from school lunch. Part of it, we used the school's um, uh, rental account. You know, if we rent the building out, we build up that fund for use at another time. So we try to find alternative funding sources, depending on what the item is. If something goes down, it may be school choice that we have to use fund um, money from. It depends on the cost and what we're talking about, too. If we're talking about a small piece of equipment, the lunch fund can pay for it. And occasionally, we'll do some of our maintenance and things in the kitchen with the building's general repairs if we have enough money in that line it all sort of just depends on how the year goes with the building in general yeah I, I, i'm just wondering because and, and again to me it, it no you're on the capital right Did, for frontier yeah okay so how about sun how Sunderland. about sun yeah you're that too right that one too many yeah. hat man of many hats yeah so so i mean is that is that something that you guys have been looking at is the expenditures or or is that Something that you haven't that has you haven't I don't seen. We looked at the kitchen stuff that I recall. Darius, do you want to speak? Sunderland over? should have. Oh, sorry, is someone talking? No, that's all right. Go ahead. Okay, so Sunderland's list, which I believe you all would have, does have a dishwasher replacement that's going to be done. Um, Jeff gave us approval through ARPA for that, so I don't know if you have a separate ARPA committee, um, but we are going to be replacing the dishwasher. Um, we just received a grant to have our convection oven replaced, so we're working on that. Uh, and this is in Sunderland, not Frontier. And then I'm just looking at the list to see what else might be on there for kitchen items. Um, I think we did that walk-in a while back, and we also did a steamer last year, right? I, I remember I the steamer, yep. Yeah, so um, we're you know we're getting to be in, in good shape there with some of that older equipment that we're tackling between the various funding sources. I mean, further down the list has the smaller kitchen equipment, which would be something we would probably pay out of the revolving account, you know, from bowls, you know, uh, cutlery, you know, those kind of things that are, are getting aged out. I mean, imagine a bowl can run forever, so it's probably a bad example, but, you know, those kind of things that are just, they're 30 years old and are, are used in the kitchen, but, if you, I mean, I think, should I should be answering, we try to use where we can, but there's not a lot of money to do oven steamers, that kind of stuff, so, you know, we obviously applied for a grant, we just got that a few weeks ago, um, in all the schools, actually, um, Jeff, Jeff, our, um, our cafeteria uh, manager, you know, was able to get the secure that grant, which is great. So it's just another project that we can knock off our list. No, I, I and, and again, I just, I just think that it, it, maybe we should start in putting those things on the capital, on the capital plan, and, 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 and so that we can see, and, and see them, so that they're not always. Right, those, those that we just listed are on the capital. Okay. Right. Um, the one that I was just kind of referring to is miscellaneous kitchen items. I mean, we could probably break that down, but I think the problem is it falls under five thousand dollars and doesn't really show right. in our cash so, yeah. But a couple hundred dollars here, a couple hundred dollars there, that stuff adds up in a budget where we don't have a line item for replacing kitchen equipment. It's not so, a line item. So is that, is that is that fifty four thousand? Is that what that's kind of used for, taking care of stuff like that, or is that just we, what you? This is traditionally. Um, or historically, is better. We're not traditionally. Historically, we haven't always been in the in the black and lunch market. Yeah, that, that's so the, the government being free lunch, and we're getting paid. We're getting all. Everybody's paying because the government's just cutting the check. In the sense, everybody, you know, we have problems with um, you know people not paying their bills. Um, you know, the balance between free and use versus buying. Depending on the school, and I don't know some of history in my head, but I just know that there's been years where we've had to use general budget to offset. The, the lunch program. So well, there hasn't it, been. It was a big, it, like a couple. Healthy spot is a big place to be. Here. You're right. A couple of years ago, it was it was a huge, right? I mean, it was a lot. It was it, it wasn't like a hundred dollars. It was it was tens of thousands. It was. Yeah, it was. I, I can't remember. I, I mix up which school it was because 
The same problem exists when you're small. How hard is it to run a cafeteria when you have one person you know, serving, one person at the cash register, and then you're only feeding, if it was, depending on the population and the number of kids that are eating. If you don't have the numbers to offset that kind of staffing, you need to absolutely have to have two people. Right. You know, and so then you have to get creative of how you do that um, when it doesn't um, wash out. So it's a good point. So I, I don't know. I don't, it's going to be interesting to see what if the government does. If they commit again, I think that's going to be a commitment kind of like moving forward. You know, if they're just going to make free lunches available in, in school systems moving forward, um, it would be interesting if they do that. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't heard any whispers which way they're going on. How, how do you, how do you how do you guys feel about the uh, in in the separation cost? I mean, those are those are sometimes pretty significant dollars. And have have you been working on the contracts to try to reduce those dollars? So we in the past contract negotiated that this no, it's been um, the teachers who are hired at at the start of Last year, the year before, no longer are getting that separation um, payment. But the problem is the teachers in the system are still their grandfather didn't under that contract. Yeah, I understand. Right. So, so we've got it. We, you know, we're able to remove that moving forward. Um, so it won't be, <laughs> it'll be the next generation's um, you know, six, you know, success on that. Um, this is the, having that removed from the, the cost. But right now, we're still obligated for those on. Yeah, because right, right. J just as his, his but history, it was that unfortunate. It was, you would see one year there would be $70,000, and then right. next Very year, be, it, next year, the year after would be zero, and then so that it bounced, it was bouncing around. So that's why we went to taking it out of the budget to put, so. You were the first community to do that. We've then since copied that model, and that's what Conway's doing this year. They have over $100,000 in separation. Well, so and, and again, it's it, 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 you can't put it out of budget. It, it, yeah, and it's a it's not it's not fair to the children. Right. It's not fair to to the people making the budgets, right? Because that that that's an unknown from well, sort of an unknown from year to year, and it depends on how how people are using that money. So, I I I think it's for us it's an it's an easier way to talk to our 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 residents about that. I think so. And it prevents you from inflating a budget for, to, you know, we could. Another way is you could plan within a budget and we could, you know, put add twenty to thirty thousand dollars annually and then hold that account. But I think it's better in, in this side of school and community is have the town hold the money, so to speak, and go to the town like we have here when, when we have to. We, we actually had a conversation about, it wasn't about the amount of money, but it was about. Uh, an assessment to be done at the senior center and originally it was in the budget and we we asked well if it's not a reoccurring expense why why is it in the budget and after we talked about it it was it made a lot of sense not to have it in the budget because it's, it's a one time or maybe it depends on where how far we get this part with the assessment but and it's the same thing like you Conway's a hundred thousand. We we very usually could be there. You know, next year we don't know, and and it'd be hard for you guys to budget that also. So, okay, yeah. So I I I'm 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 fine with taking it out of the budget. I I, I think it's better being out of the budget. So I don't know if I misheard or not, but did she say that part of a payment for something came out of the rental fund? Is that another revolving fund that isn't listed here? That account is not listed there because it's a very small account that really Ben sort of manages at the school. Um, it, when we do rent the building, we put the money in it, we save some of it up and then we spend it, you know, for various things here or there. I think when we use that to help with the uh, kitchen equipment that needed replacement, there was maybe only five or $6,000 in it. So. Um, that's not reported here. Our primary revolving accounts are reported in this um, presentation. So you've got an account on here with a balance of 600 that you are reporting, but one with 5,000 that you're not? Is I, I'm just trying to understand 
when you're saying it's a small amount, I there's another one here with a small amount too. It, it's not an account that we use for budget purposes, which is not why it's not reported here. Okay. We would never put an expenditure on there that's an annual expense because there's no guarantee on what we're going to have for revenue coming in. So it's really sort of a, um, I don't want to say slush fund because that doesn't sound right, but that's sort of how we treat it. Money comes in, Ben might do a small project or buy something that the school needs You know, with that money or we let it save up. It's not something we would offset the budget with. More of a petty cash fund in that sense. Yeah, that's a similar concept. So, so can you can you address school choice monies? And 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 again, I'm again, I'm not I'm not asking to to know where the do every dollar is being spent. But what we learned over the last few years that we were spending money that we didn't have, and you were trying to get back to having monies in. Right. Can so, you talk uh, about I'll just, that? I'll show you give the details of where we're at. Because she might be able to even share a screen on that. Because I think it's the next thing. That was down below, right? I'm looking up at you, Shelly. But um, our, our goal with, with school choice spending is we do some of our, um, in, in some of them, we want to try to hold as much where we call it a year in the rear spending, where we, we have a full year's worth of school choice. So you're not operating on the money you're receiving that year and then also you have a shortfall all of a sudden you have a couple kids less school choice and all of a sudden you're not making budget so should you want to walk through the numbers there yep um so we have been trying to do exactly what darius just described uh, the school committee has been very much aware of how much they're placing on school choice or what we're making for changers for expenditures based on revenue coming in so if you can see my screen here, you can see we're going to go into next year. So the end of FY22, we're projecting around 400,000. We're expecting our revenue to be almost that same amount, just shy of 410,000. And we are overexpending, um, but that 485 is actually down um, from the current year because we are working every year to slowly move some things off. Um, we're also making a shift so that if we're putting something back um, onto the general fund, say we're moving a salary off of school choice, but we're replacing it with the transportation expense, like exactly like we're doing this year. We're putting on expenditures or trying to put on expenditures that could be one-time things that we have to pay for, such as an out-of-district placement or increased transportation costs versus continuing to pay significant salaries and wages. While some portion of this is still salaries and wages, we're trying to be much more aware of what we're spending those funds on so that it's not something that's got to stay on there long term for the life of uh, the account. So we feel really good with where the account looks to be projected at the end of next year. 324000 is up hundreds of thousands of dollars. I, I think uh, 19 into 20, there was maybe 99000 or 150000 in that account. And I believe that's the year you all went for the override. Um, was because you offloaded so many things off of choice onto the general fund. That was the year before I started. Um, so we have been working really consciously to, to bring that account up and make sure that we have adequate funds in the event that there is um, something unforeseen that comes up. It could be a boiler. You know, you all know that we have that issue that we're dealing with the boiler right now. If we didn't have ARPA funds to pay for that, and if the town didn't have other means to help support the school, we would be able to take care of that with school choice based on what we've currently built up. So our goal is to continue to look at the expenses year to year. Next year, the hope is that for fiscal year 24, we're bringing that number down a little bit farther um, and slowly make some shifts so that we're holding one year's revenue in that account for unforeseen or emergency expenditures. Okay, thank you. David, do you have, Chris, any questions? No. So, so in, in, in that budget, what do you, if, if you were to look at five years from now, what do you, what do you see happen within, have, have you looked at enrollment over the next five years? I, I mean, 
are, are we steadying and out? Is our enrollment starting to steady or are we growing, shrinking? I'll be honest, it is a really hard predictor right now because of, um, well, you can blame everything on COVID, but it does have a significant, we have a lot of kids who left the schools um, and either do homeschooling um, or moving around. So I'll be curious to see, this one of the things that Sunderland has been hit by a lot of um, new students because of the amount of apartments in the community. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see what kind of shift we have um, from that. So it's very hard to employ, uh, enrollment trends for the elementary because they have to be born. And you also yeah. have a lot of, you know, Ben's you know, tells, has told you guys stories about, um, you know, getting, you know, s you know, seven kids in one class in one given year, you know, coming into, um, to coming into the town. So I don't have projections out enrollment-wise. Overall, enrollment is going down overall in Franklin County. Um, but I think some of those unique places you do the last have the flexibility years. to bring in families quickly. Um, compared oh, to, yeah. You know, and so and we've seen that. So, um, well, I just, I would, I, I, I ask, because I look, I look at, I'm looking at your numbers, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it, it, I think are interesting numbers when you look at 18, 19, at 230, 220, and in, in 2020, it dropped to 184, and 21, it went to 189. I mean, that's, and again, I rounding up or round, just, you're looking at 40, 40 students. I mean, that's, that's a significant number of students. Of that. Yeah. So I, I and and I, I was looking at your your class sizes and the class sizes from PK up to third grade are pretty mid twenties, and then fourth grade seems you know it smaller smaller but. I, it just it, just looking at across the board how how numbers are changing across the grade levels. You know, when you look at kindergarten kindergarten of 2018, it looks 25 with seven school choice, and then today it's or 2021 it's 15 with six school choice. I, I mean, so that's what difference of 10. That that's so. Yeah, I mean, when you look at when you look at the, the chart that Shelley um, put on the, that you guys have there, really when you look at from 19 to 20, do the diagonal group and go down there because you can see that we have, it's a massive drop across the board. It's not yeah. just the size of your kindergarten class coming in. It was several people from each grade level made choices around education. And especially at the younger ages where people are, are concerned about the pandemic, um, during the pandemic, they can choose not to send their child to you know, the pre-K or opt out not to send a child to kindergarten waiting year. And that's kind of an effect we're gonna see in education across the state because they're, they're talking about a bumper class that's gonna come in and it's just gonna be a larger class across the state where people say, well, I don't need to, I'll just withhold my kid and send them the next year when this whole thing is hopefully over, you know, that kind of thing. So really, you're gonna you're gonna see those kind of things. There is a drop, but um, this is one of the things we've been talking about class sizes, you know, you know at what point, you know, you know, you can see the numbers in front of you. Um, grade grade one, there's 14 students right now. Um, what is that going to look like? Well, we're still waiting. We're still waiting to get all the registrations in, and we're also um, waiting to see how things shift before we make any decisions about reducing the number of classrooms and that kind of stuff. Um, and Ben can kind of talk about that if you want to detail that area. Um, but he's he's monitoring those numbers because we don't want to shut it down. Right, and then, and have then to all go of a sudden you have a class of 26 at the younger grade levels, which you really don't want to have, and then you also lose your opportunity to open up spots for choice. So we want to, we're playing that game, and it gets, it's getting more and more difficult when the numbers are getting to where they're at now, where you know you could stop choice, put you know 20 in a classroom or something like that, and then you know you lose your choice revenue, which we've been start to depend on. So it's playing that balancing game. Um, you know, if you know if there's a class that's too small then we'll have to make that decision and then you'll see savings the following year um, rather than cutting toward it, increase savings, um, guessing the numbers. So, so do you, do you, you're, st as a superintendent, you're still responsible for the students that are homeschooled also, right? Correct. Do you still see those kids in town? 
Are they still, are they, are they here? I, I don't see them. They actually, I don't actually put physical eyes on them. They, they no, but I mean the num them. number, number of what? Num yeah, I, I get a submit, I get submitted a learning plan um, by each of them. And I have those numbers, but I don't have them on here. They're on my desk, I can send them to you. Um, but I have, a, they, anybody who registers to be homeschool has got to show me what their plans right. are. Right. Um, and I have to either approve or not approve or ask for more information than that to give end your assessments. And no kids are still here. They're just not They're attending the elementary school. Interesting. Okay. Um, is there anybody that would like to uh, have any questions? Wendy's, Wendy's iPhone has a hand up. Wendy? Oops, thank you, Tom. I can see you. Um, I, can you see me? Yes, yep. we can. I just wanted to, uh, I guess what I've noticed from having kids go to school at the elementary school in the 90s and having them go to school now, it, it's, a, it's a lot different. I am amazed at what the administration does. There's a lot of different needs, a whole lot, host of different needs than, than there was back then. And um, I, I wonder if a 3% increase is really adequate um, for what is going on. And not saying that they're, um, to pot, you know, um, that it's not a responsible budget. I just know that um, there's just a whole lot of stuff going on and numbers um, for special education are a whole lot higher. And um, Sunderland does seem to have some costs that maybe most schools don't have. And I, um, I think uh, it's great that it's a 3% budget, but I wonder if it really should be higher to meet some needs of all the students. If I was an administrator, I'd have an ulcer, I think. Okay. Um, Darius, you or uh, Shelly want to answer that? Was that a question, right, Wendy? Why well, she got me I'm muting and muting. And yeah, it, it, I, I, I wonder um, sometimes if we have to meet the 3%, if we're taking some vital things away to, to get the percentage when maybe um, it would be better service having a higher percentage, but more more needs are being met and and i don't want to say that needs aren't being met but um i just wonder if it would be easier at a higher percentage okay so the answer would be yes i mean yeah i mean absolutely we'd always want more money um i think that's the kind of the balancing act that we have to that we have to play, the school committee plays. Um, you know, we, that's why we, we started the process, you know, since I've um, taken over as superintendent, you know, I started the process of showing what we want percentage budgets. You can go back to number one, you know, uh, the, the first budget, so people can get an idea of the planning that, even though, I, you know, we really don't need to be publicly showing step one and step two, but we do, so people have an idea of what needs are out there and if we have to come back around to those needs. I mean, we could come back, you know, next year and say, you know what, while we put the adjustment council on hold, you know, it's been it's been it's been in front of people's eyes who are watching the budget. We are gonna really push, you know, we did that with the special ed position, leader position in the school. Um, it was a, we had been cut from the budget for several years in a row and we were through some tough times. But when we reached a point where we could have um, the funds, we went back at it. So I think that's the approach we're doing on things, whereas we're trying to show some of the ideas that we have, um, but also you get to balance it off by, if I came in here with a, you know, a, we came in here with a, a, a five, six, seven percent budget, you know, we, we also understand where the town's at and stuff. So um, it's that kind of the, that balancing act there. So when people say, you know, the school should have more money, I'll always say sure. 
um, you know, um, so I think that's that's how the way we're approaching it, so that you can see what we have left off, and that we may come back around later on and say that you know we um, need to prioritize this even further when we're not cutting it. Um, so that's kind of that just shows that we're having those conversations that we didn't just say, oh, this is where we came at at three percent, you know, and you don't see any of those kind of main parts. So, so I, I, I see your, I see the, uh, the budget's three million and, and some dollar. What's a total budget with grants and other funding? Do you have that off the I top of your head? I think the number that she gave. It's in the report that um, it's just under four million. Look, I can't um, That's correct. It's the it's in that last sentence of the first page of that report that you have, Tom. So three point nine million. Yep. So about nine hundred thousand from grants and other areas. Seven seventy three. Seven seventy five. Mm. Now is that is that a normal amount? That you what you yeah, usually usually see that. That's yep. That's typical over the last several years. Okay. I think Greg had a question. You had a question, Greg. Uh, I was just going to uh, respond to uh, Wendy's question about the budget. Um, it is the school committee's budget, not the administration's budget, and we do work with them to try to balance the uh, um, the needs of the community with uh, the ability of the community to, to fund the schools. Um, but if there's fault to be found, it's, it's with the school committee, not with the administration. Um, we do what we can to support an affordable uh, school for the town and at the same time uh, address um, special needs as they're growing, which you're, you're absolutely right to point out that they're, they were spiking anyway before COVID and we're seeing uh, more needs because of COVID, but uh, the school does an excellent job, especially with early intervention and uh, it's, we try not to escalate the cost faster than the town can absorb the increase uh, in the budget. So, uh, I mean, that's kind of where that falls, I think. And uh, if the administration wants to lean on us for more, we can, you know, always, we'll always responsive and we'll always go to the town uh, if the school administration comes to us with specific concerns. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. All right, you have anything else? Anybody else want? Good. Good? Yeah, I have a question, Tom. Shoot, go ahead. Where are you in contact negotiations with teachers and IAs? We currently have a tenured agreement that hasn't been ratified yet. So we're done with the negotiation part, and both sides are looking at the tenured agreement. What percentage raises are they going to be getting? It's not, it can't be public until it's been agreed upon. Who's asking? Jeremy? It's we can't make it public because negotiations are, are in executive session until it's agreed upon. It's a finance committee member, Linda Forge. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I don't know. It is so that that's one of the, the things is that um, negotiate the negotiations of contracts are covered under the open meeting laws specifically allows that the, uh, the them to be negotiated in executive session executive session is uh, we, we take serious but in and meaning that whatever goes on so Basically, David technically could call for a an executive session of the 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 select board, and he could update us on on what's going on in the negotiations. Um, but typically, we don't do that because we usually whoever our, our rep is, we allow them. 
and then at the end he'll come and he'll tell us what's an executive session before it's but yeah executive session is is pretty um consistent you don't when once you enter the room you you can you can talk whatever you can say but when you leave that room whatever said in that room stays in that room and um we're pretty it's a pretty strong governance on that that respect so we don't like to use it loosely very yeah. careful with it yeah and, and it's always been that way all right anything else various or school committee you'd like to add anything peter you want to say anything mr principal Still on? okay all right i guess we're all set with sunderland frontier Again, Shelley, we'll put on a different hat, Shelley. <laughs> Darius, you want me to go ahead, or do you have anything you want to say first? So this one has already been voted on. Unlike the uh, Sunland budget, it has its public hearing tomorrow night. This one has already had its public hearing and has been um, approved by the school committee. Now I can go. <laughs> that was your introduction. Go for it, Shelley. Thanks. Okay, so as Darius said, school committee has already voted on uh, the budget. It went through public hearing, uh, I think it was last week, and was voted to move ahead to the four towns. Um, so the final draft presented an increase of 3.64%. Um, that did include uh, one new position, just a minor position, and I believe it's an additional IA, which is a, you know, a, uh, not a significant amount of money, but a, a new staff member. Um, and then otherwise, all of the increases were related to level services. So existing staffing, existing programs, all of those contract adjustments that we talked about, we build in placeholders for um, any wages, anyone central office or building based. Uh, and then we look at our expense accounts. So we did have increases that were out of our control for special education. Um, we had just shy of 200,000 for an out of district placement. Um, for multiple students, we have a lot of changes going on next year at Frontier with our out-of-district placement, so that was a very significant cost for us. Um, we also had about 50000 or almost $50,000 in separation cost increase and Franklin Regional Retirement Assessment. Uh, and then we had adjustments to the technology account, similar like I discussed with uh, Sunderland, we are seeing that our technology lines have been underfunded for several years, so we're right-siding those accounts and getting the proper budget lines in there. Um, we are losing uh, some circuit breaker revenue, which is related to special education costs, um, So, and it's always a year behind, so we're going to see a decrease in uh, circuit breaker reimbursement next year based on the current year's special education costs. So we had to fund additional salaries and wages in another way. So my point in giving you all of these examples is to let you know that that 3.64% increase, much like Sunderland, all but maybe $30,000 of that was related to level services, so existing staffing and existing programs. There were other requests that had been eliminated al along the way. Um, in school committee's decisions to bring the budget down. Uh, so what does that mean for Sunderland? So Sunderland's assessment, uh, let me get to the right page, is coming in uh, less than last year, but you know, still what I, I think people will perceive as a, a higher increase. So Sunderland is looking at a 5.91% increase for Frontier's assessment at $116,731. I don't have anything else unless there are specific questions. Sunderland was up over 14% last year for an increase. And the year before that, there was a decrease of uh, almost the exact same amount that the increase this year. It was a, a negative reduction of 6.45% for a savings to the town of 111,000 just for some historical data. 
Oh, and the other thing to note um, is that there will be a separate assessment for the band proceeds for the uh, construction project that was 1.8 million that was approved, I think, in 2019. We're paying very low interest rates. Uh, we borrowed 930,000 against that band, so Sunderland will see an addition, additional assessment of $656. Okay. Um, Darius, you want to you want to talk? I mean, I'm sure the question's coming about the uh, contract. Do you want to talk about that for the frontier? What do you mean? What's the question? I don't understand what you're asking. Well, uh, the increases. Can you talk about that? So theirs is also hasn't been. Oh, it hasn't been agreed upon yet. Yeah. So we're both are done with negotiation. Both are going back to. Um, Right now, actually, Frontiers Teachers Association last week voted the contract, so they voted yes, but I still have to bring it to Frontier before it can be finalized. So both of the work is done, it's just a matter of taking it back to each of the committees to agree upon. Oh, I thought our committees I, and then the union. Yeah, I, I thought the I thought the Frontier had already been agreed no. upon. No, but there's it, timing wise, it's just been taking much longer than. The second stage, which you really think can be done in a week, is actually taking over a month because people have to get together. They have to, they have to do a full vote of their association, and then I got to bring it to the next school community in Frontier. So that'll be done um, the first week of April. Even so the nu the numbers that are in the budget are appropriate for to cover the contract. Correct. How's that for asking a question without asking a question? Do we anticipate an increase after the, no, we do not anticipate the increase. Okay. Um, the, uh, Shelly, back to Sunderland Elementary School for one second. I appreciate the fact of how you presented the, um, the additional costs for retirements and such. I, 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 so sometimes that's, and you did it again with front, the frontier numbers, and I appreciate how that was presented. So, um, and, and so you could actually look at what kind of effect it had on, and, and again, I think that's, that's important when, when you look at the numbers, what act, what, what's actually happening or what drives a budget. And I thought that was, it was nice to have those numbers put out there so we could see those. Also, also I, th I think, Greg, I, I think w one of the things, and, and, and I, I'll probably get in trouble for this because I learned kind of a long time ago not to speak for the town clerk, um, but I, I think um, her question was more a question versus a criticism or, or anything. I and, and again, we kind of, we want people to ask questions and and, and have a conversation. So I, I hope it wasn't taken. Okay. Okay. No, I, no. I, I, Not I, at all. All right. Um, but just to, all I just want to make sure is if anyone out there at all has any problem with the school budget, uh, they should take it up with the school committee uh, and not directly with the administration because we're we're here to listen to you. I guess is is where I was getting at. Yeah. So, so, Shelley, what do you see in, in the frontier budget? What do you see as your main drivers of the budget? Uh, salaries and wages are always our, our main driver. You know that they make up the majority of our budget. Um, that's where the largest increases come from every year, uh, whether it's central office staff, support staff at the at the building level, or our, our teachers and IAs. I want to say. Um, something like 48 or 49 percent of the budget is salaries and wages and that doesn't include um, uh, benefits and things along those lines that's strictly salaries and wages benefits are, are in a separate line item I was just scroll I was just saying if you're if you had the enrollment at frontier the computers thinking so I can't it's not a Huh? I didn't see a birthday. Do you do you have enrollment numbers, Shelley, for Frontier? Yeah, so the the worksheet that you have I think shows the five year rolling enrollment. Um, the enrollment 
that we are looking at based on the October 1 uh, enrollment numbers are 609 students. So you look at, yeah, see, it's the computer still updating. So you're looking about 100, 100 members per class at Frontier around? Correct. And school choice is how much out of this? Is that include school choice? That the 600 and mm -hmm. 600, so I'm saying 610, so I, I think easy number. Mm -hmm. um, that, yes. that includes school choice. You, you wouldn't have to have know how many school choice kids? Do you have a uh, show your internet just went down here? Darius, what'd you say? I said my internet just went down here, so can you do that? Oh, yes. Um, of the 609, 172 as of October 1 were school choice. Mine did too. Jeff, our internet died. Oh, good nice thing we plugged it. that one in. I know, good thing you did. I don't know, mine's working. I'm Jake's fine. Working. Yeah. Try to do something. I think it might be a user issue. I don't know. Are, you on, are you guys on button ball or uh, uh, public? Let me say. I might be on the public one, though. I was on the What would you say we should be on? Um, if I'm you can on get ball. on button ball, I would suggest that one. Darius probably can't. Is that what you're I'm on? I'm on the spot? public one because I've had problems with the button ball one a lot. Yeah, so. no, I'm on button ball and I have fine. Yeah. I was on town of Sunday one. Well, while we're figuring out technology, yeah. um, Shell, you mentioned that technology at Frontier was increasing with, so. Two of the things that I noticed were, I assume it's district-wide admin contract service was up like 66% and then um, network telecom building expense was up 50%. Are those the technology accounts that you were talking about that were previously underfunded or there's just... Yes, that's exactly correct. It's software related. It's not. We're not underfunded for any of our hardware. We actually have, uh, because of ESSER funds, been able to take care of a lot of the hardware issues. But it's all software related. So things that we use uh, curriculum-wise, and also things that we use, uh, you know, our parent square to blast out emails, whether it's teachers doing it or clubs or. You know, Darius announces a snow day, those kind of programs to run the district. Um, other things that our central office shared, such as our, you know, school spring where we post uh, job postings, our time and attendance management system, um, some other uh, special education tracking technology related things, software. Everyone's seeing a huge increase and we've seen it slowly happening. Uh, and we've added programs over the last few years, so we're just trying to right side those accounts so that they're fully funded properly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Any, qu Jeff? I have a no. couple more, but I want to go, no, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, Shelly, you also mentioned SPED costs increasing, and I saw that the elementary school SPED transportation budget was up 60%, but Frontier was level funded. I mean, are, are we seeing only... I know that the Frontier budget for SPED overall increased, but I, I was just curious about... Is there something particular about elementary school students or just the number in, in Sunderland that's causing an increase or a mandate about how certain students are transported that's increasing costs? Frontier is also seeing an increase in transportation costs, but it, we're funding it from another funding source. So the spreadsheet that you have just shows the difference general fund to general fund. We had to make the decision to move some costs at Frontier to other revolving funds like we've done in Sunderland as well. So we are seeing an increase district-wide, all five schools, all of our special education transportation is up. Okay. And then another, I have two more questions that hopefully will be quick. I noticed, and, and this might be the same answer that you just gave, but um, you know, there, there are, 
shared staff, and I'll point to the superintendent's secretaries, I think, were on the frontier budget, the general fund was decreased, and on the Sunderland Elementary, it increased. Is it is it the same answer? It was just moved, some of it was moved off the general fund for Frontier? So those expenditures that are shared uh, central office-wise between the five schools, they fluctuate every year because it's based on a cost share percentage on enrollment. So it's enrollment driven. So Sunderland is seeing um, in one of the categories that it's split five ways, Sunderland is actually seeing an increase of about 0.35%. So that's what's driving up Sunderland's share of central office expenses like the superintendent's receptionist, um, business office, facilities director, anything that's shared five ways, Sunderland should have an increase on all of those lines. On the flip side, Frontier, because Frontier's enrollment is going down as a whole, um, Frontier is seeing a decrease in their cost share percentage. So most of those expense accounts are going to have a negative number because Frontier's cost share went down. Thank you, that makes sense. And then my last maybe easy question, do we have an anticipated number of um, students out of district that we're gonna be sending out of district? Do we have it, I guess? Just for budgeting I purposes? I think Frontier is slated to have 12 next year based on the last information that I have from the special education department. And we are seeing a significant increase um, of almost $200,000 in out of district placements at Frontier next year. But I think we, we budget for that separately or is it just elementary student? No, I think it's Frontier students from Sunderland that we you know, as soon as, the, as soon as the seminal child goes to Frontier, it becomes Frontiers alone. But if they're out of district? If, we, if Frontier has to place a student out of district, it doesn't still, matter what town doesn't you're matter from. matter what town you come from, unless you're choice now. But it, if they went to Smith Vocational? That's it. Okay. Yeah, how, that, how many Smith not, students? That's not a placement. That's a, okay, that's a vocational. I'm sorry. Um, option. But you're right. That, so that then the, the locationals assess the town separately. Right. And that's okay. Do we have a Do we have a guesstimate on how many we might have to go into a vocational out of? I district? believe you have one. Why? I think okay. I sent a note. I sent you a note on that. As I get them now. I think you sent me a note that there's one application. Yeah. Training, um, okay. So you got an idea what's happening. Thank you. And then the Franklin Tech is a separate assessment, and, you know, obviously it's a different line. Right, right. yeah. The town, but the same idea. Yeah. I always thought that was strange how that works. It's even stranger now that you have choice in your charter. And so you have all these different formulas of how the money's coming in and going out and how tech is, is a different animal within that. So it, it gets, it, it's confusing because you get three different methods of how the town is being built and where the money's coming and going from and it's not it's not always a little level playing field no well i saw i see i solved all of our problems last week oh good on, on how okay. to fund this is a new week right so you have all this week yeah. well <laughs> you know we you know i was sat down looked out at the horizon and said what was the biggest and and i i still don't understand how we we, we, the state funds education. I, I look at it and, and I, I go back when I first started, which was when Crystal was in grade school. But um, I, I, I think at the time, Sunderland was getting like 68% of its cost of education was paid by the state. And I look at what it's today. And and I and then I and then I, I was happen to look across the state at what it, what different communities pay for education and I there's a, two things I can't one is I don't know why a teacher in Sunderland gets paid less than a teacher in Arlington I know why but I I don't know why we allow that okay. And the other thing I don't understand is how a student in Sunderland 
gets a cheaper education cost-wise than an education in Arlington either. That, that, that's never made sense to me. And I, I figured that the student in Sunderland is as valuable as a student in Arlington. A student in just as a teacher in Sunderland is as valuable as a teacher. And so why the disparity? Um, so I would, my, my solution was that the state funds labor. And you wouldn't have 360 or 351 negotiation or more negotiation. It'd be one. The state negotiates with, it'd be one. And that's how that, that would go. And that the towns would be responsible to put together a building. And that, that would be what we, what we would pay for. In, in looking at the big picture, so I had a meeting, um, the, the superintendents met with their legislators um, last Friday, Friday before last. So I, I sat with, with Joe Comerford and um, kind of explained that our district is also in a unique spot where we get almost no student opportunity at money. So you talk about all these millions and millions that are flowing into schools. We got the, the increase of $30 per student. So that, that money's not coming into our district. Um, we don't get rural. We get well, some really got a little bit of rural um, grant money. Like yeah, 15, we we got a like little 15, bit. Fifteen thousand. You know, by the time I had to fill out all the paperwork of how I was going to increase the efficiencies with that fifteen thousand dollars, I'm not sure. You know, I, I actually had it was not less worth efficient it. to get the money. I'll still fill out the paperwork for fifteen thousand, but it, I said we're not getting the hundreds of thousands some of the other area districts are getting. I said, and we're going to hold harmless spot with the state which basically says because our enrollment's going on when they started this that you know they don't decrease our funding but they're not getting anything more either as everything else goes up so and especially you know we do school choice right and they haven't changed the school choice number we're using that to offset our budget but they haven't increased that since they started school choice so i said we're kind of we're stuck we're a community that's really stuck i'm not just some of the four towns all of them are stuck funding it by the taxpayer Absolutely. There's no other extra stuff coming from the state, and we're, the state, other communities are seeing an influx of money through these different programs, but we don't qualify because we're just wealthy enough not to be poor, and um, you know, and we don't have any of those other circumstances to get um, the money for. So and we're kind of in this weird spot. So I mean, we talked about it. I mean, she can't change the world, but uh, you know, it's on her. You know, she's it's on her radar about this is, you know. We need different exceptions to get some of those funding sources to off, so it doesn't all go on the local tax credit. Well, in property tax, pro the way property tax is set up is probably one of the most regressive tax taxes out there. And and I, I just don't. And again, so we, and 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 so you see you see. Some communities are looking at split tax rates now and shifting the cost to businesses. Okay, so businesses businesses don't use many services in a community. They don't they don't have children that, that go to the schools, and that and that's and, and Shelley said it. That's that's our driving force is labor, and 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 you need teachers to teach and and custodial su support to clean and cafeterias workers to provide lunches, and and so it that doesn't it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense to me. Why we we put the most regret one of the most regressive taxes is our main f methods of raising for our most critical resource that we have. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but I I just I just don't see it changing. And 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 you're absolutely right. I mean, and again, I, was, I say I don't think kids at Sunderland or Deerfield, Conway, Whiteley, Hatfield. Are any less important than Arlington, Newton, Boston, and and we go back to uh, pilot money payment in lieu of taxes that started in the, in the western western state in the Cape as a way of getting some of that what they call quote unquote deferred tax money because it it goes to like twenty three communities usually bigger well a lot bigger communities. But allowed us a, a, a revenue source to help offset some money come back. But as soon as all the the other towns or cities in the eastern part of the state saw that we were getting money payment in lieu of taxes, said, well, we got we got state things also. We need to be paid also. And it's like, 
okay. And so now there's fun. It's fun in a certain amount. And what happened? All that money. It all went to the. A lot of it is going to the eastern part of the state, where it really was to help the communities in the western part, the smaller communities that were basically 50 percent of their towns were taken up by forest or state forest or whatever that we can't build on. We can't derive revenue from. So, all right. Do um, you have anything, Jessica? You guys want to add anything? I'll just say that for both budgets, Sunderland and Frontier, I think uh, it was it's a difficult process. I, I, I actually appreciate when you question. I think it's advocacy more than criticism. Um, and and I'm, um, compliment Darius, who repeatedly tells us that it's our budget. It's not the, the school's budget. It's, we're the ones who get to decide how to do it. And there would be a lot more that we would ask for, but I think we really try to to walk that fine line of, of providing as much as we can for the students in the community and presenting a responsible budget for uh, the community as well. Uh, I think especially this year coming in, um, at least for me, there was a, a motivation to try to have, not have wild swings to bring something to the town that was um, in some way close to normal calm numbers rather than have um, you know another shock to the system. So it was, for both budgets, the, the frontier is a little bit more difficult because of the regional agreement that there's more fluctuations. It's a frustration of mine that there's no consistency from year to year. You know, you know, there always seems to be one town that gets hit, and it's right. like every it's year going and it's yeah. like pulling that. Um, <laughs> it's like a slot machine, yeah. yeah. And seeing <laughs> who's going to get it, but um, I think the motivation this year was to, to really come in with responsible budgets and to that the town can can work with while at the same time trying to provide for the students. And I'll put a plug in too for the business office, especially over the through the negotiation and all the budget meetings. I think we've had over the last several years some good uh, good management in the bud, you know, the business office. So, little shout out to you there, Shelley. And I would second that. I think one of the things over the last several years is stabilizing all those rotating budgets. Yes. Um, yep. Rotating funds, uh, both school choice and um, the lunch was over several years ago, it, it was really a mess, and I think it's been, uh, they're both healthy now. Yeah. It's okay. Anything else? Peter's hand. Um, Greg? Yep. Go ahead. Uh, um, I just wanted to add, follow up on what Keith was saying, and that is that, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, an important part of budgeting is not just looking at what you're spending money on, but what your, what your revenues are. And um, we've, there's been a lot of work done in the last couple of years about trying to, to, to do better with our revenues. And in one area, which is specifically expected for school choice, is that we've, we're, we're now really, really making sure that we get credit and reimbursement for all the special ed costs that we incur for any school choice children. And that's the kind of thing that, that's what the law calls for, but unless your special ed folks are, you know, do, keeping track of every single thing and then filing to get reimbursed for it, you end up getting, I think in the past there may have been times when we got a fair bit less revenue than we were entitled to. Um, that certainly is not happening now in the special ed department is right on top of that. And, and so the, that's one of the reasons why the school choice numbers are looking better. Um, likewise, in the school lunch fund, uh, both there and in the early childhood, what Shelley's done is she's taken the money that was uh, part of the, the ESSA grant money and by using it to pay uh, salaries in these two uh, areas, we've ended up with uh, a much better position in them going forward with significant balances. Now the school lunch, you know, it's like Keith said, it's, we've, been, we've been behind on that one, now we're well ahead. But we're going to have expenses coming up that are not just the salaries and the food costs, but also uh, the upkeep of all the equipment in the kitchen. Uh, we've gotten a lot of help from the town uh, in the last couple of years of paying for some sizable items, but um, there's still a lot of the stuff in there that's just really old, and so this will put us in good shape for dealing with that. Um, Cheryl asked a question about the uh, why are we showing the revolving fund for special ed that only shows like I think it was six hundred dollars worth of income or something like that. Uh, that was money. That was a fund set up so that if we had a tuition in student, in other words, a student 
that another school was paying us like sixty thousand dollars to educate, uh, and we were we were paying salaries to take care of that. Uh, that fund uh, within the last two or three years had income that was in six figures. Okay, and so it's still being shown here, even though all of those tuition in students have now aged out of our school. So that in this uh, looking forward, particularly to to the this this budget. Basically, income is just about stopped, but it's still being shown there just because it always has been a much bigger number. Uh, the other fund that you referred to was the, the school users fund was set up for renting uh, uh, anyone who paid rent to use the building, say, on a weekend or something like that. The money went into the school users fund, and that money was to be spent on the maintenance of the school. Uh, we spent basically... Uh, all that was in it a couple of years ago was, was nine thousand dollars to help pay for the cost of the boiler that broke down. Um, now it's, you know it'll be built up slowly, but that's really not a big item in the overall picture, and that's why it hasn't been put in there. Um, I guess I'd like to say a whole lot of thanks to to Jeff and, and to the and to David, who's who's the chair of the capital planning committee, and to the board of, and to the select board for. The support the school is getting this year in the way of helping to meet capital needs that we have been struggling to meet as you know the years go by because the sort of stuff the capital needs of the school are the sorts of things that always get deferred if you if you don't have the money and so i think we're going to be making real progress this year in getting done this you know the stuff that we've we've been unable to do and obviously the big chunk of arpa funds uh is is the, that's largely due to that, but it's still, um, I think the select board, it's, uh, uh, you know, we certainly understand the school committee, and I think the select board feels the same way, that the school is very much a part of the town, it's owned by the town, uh, so on, and so it's all in our best interest to make sure we take care of it as well as possible. So thank you for that. And finally, I'd just like to thank and acknowledge the work that's being done by Shelley and Darius, uh, you know, at the central office to... to to do such a good job running the school because they really are fantastic. Yeah, I, I, the one, one of the I, I have to I have to comment because Peter can't see himself, but Peter so used to wearing a mask that's why we, we that only why we, just from the we, we only see Peter from his note. <laughs> there you go. Eh? <laughs> I just. Uh, <laughs> I would have. I, I would have. Uh, I would have come, but I'm still not 100% healthy. So, sorry about that. No, it, it was just it was just funny looking at. Yeah. You know, we only saw you from the nose down. I mean, nose up. So, um, yeah. I, I mean, we 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 have we, we look at revenues and and budgets, and I I mean we're get, we're getting pretty close to a 10 million dollar budget for the town of Sunderland. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So i I would have never, I would have never thought that was possible. So, um, I I and, and but won't. So I I the one thing I would say is that when 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 you do look at budgets and and actually you know when well, I never thought I heard would hear Wendy say because I think she said you guys weren't asking for enough. Right. That is correct. Huh? That is correct. And and um, I I don't think that's. I think she said that. I think she has said that before. Um, but I haven't heard that for a while. So. Um, and I, I guess that would be. I guess if I was a s school committee, that that that'd be an an, inter an interesting comment to hear. So, and, but. Um. I appreciate the efforts that you have that goes in. I know it's not easy. I, I would I would continue to say, Shelley, I, I would I I would recommend that you again you talk to um, Jeff throughout the year and, and and talk about revenues, you know, what, what the town looks like for revenues if if we see this huge influx of money coming in or I, I, I think that that's critical is that we talk back and forth. Um, because although Frontier is a district, I mean, it still go back to the town. So I would highly recommend that we, and 
that we talk and, and Ben and you know does that with Jeff you know the communication and and I, I talked to Bill the uh, your facilities manager now so um, does anybody have any other questions Wendy the yellow hand is up. Hi, I just wanted to, I didn't necessarily say that they needed to spend more money. I, what I was trying to say was, I don't know if the 3%, the percentage will always hold true right. nowadays. <clears throat> because I, I think with the mandated costs, that if they did come in at 5 or 6%, I, they, I don't think it would be a choice. Um, I think it would be cost that they would have to be spending. So I, I apologize if it sounded critical. It, I just sometimes think that a percentage doesn't always reflect the actual need. Does that make sense? Yep. Of course it does. Thank so, you. I Blame Tommy for talking for you. I'll, I'll never talk for you again. Hmm. No, 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 no. I, I think <laughs> Mr. Gossett said the same thing. Um, and See? I watch every single school committee, so I know <laughs> how everybody does their job. Um, and it certainly wasn't meant as a criticism to the school committee or to uh, the administration. I think they're doing a fantastic job within the means that they have. Um, and, uh, you know, I have to say, all of these, the school committee and the administration work so hard with COVID. I mean, I, they're getting nothing but praise from me. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. All right, anything else? So, so next time when you say, before I, I you know, I, should, I probably shouldn't say this. You probably shouldn't say, you know, it's like, oh. I tried. Yeah, I know, right? Uh oh, Did the hand came up again. Oh, I that might not just, that just cleared. Put the hand down. Okay. Anything else, Darius? Oh. Keith, oh. Jess, Shelley. All right. I'd like to uh, say you guys are all set. Thank you very much for your presentation. Have a good night. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. All right, next up. Um, so I would say next week we, uh, we're going to do our budget reviews. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about budget this week just because Go ahead. All right. um, we, we're, we're still working on some of the numbers. We think we have a, a good idea of what free cash is going to be. Um, if we're right... Um, looking at the requests from from all the departments, we have about a hundred and seven, a hundred and eight thousand dollar gap um, where revenues, or excuse me, expenses exceed revenues. And the reason I just at least wanted to mention it is because one of the potential solutions would be an override vote if that were something that the select board wanted. And I, I'm not suggesting it. I'm just saying it, right. it is Those an option and tools. it needs to be decided by Friday if that's the route that's going to happen. So um, I, I think there are other ways to close the gap. Um, and I'm happy to discuss some of them. But uh, I, 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 I'm not in the mood for an override. Okay. No, and I think it's within the usual range of what we have to utilize free cash and other things for. Yep. Based on past ones, but but it's you got to talk about all your, all your options on the table. Yep. No, a absolutely. And I just be, because of that deadline for having it on the ballot, I wanted to make sure it was yep. raised before that passed. Um, we got administrative things we got to do. Yep. So if that's off the table, we could certainly talk about um, okay. next week. Yeah, I, 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 so there, there's a, there's some items that, that were contingent that you'll probably, you know, we'll, we'll talk directly about, okay? Yep. I mean, there, there's certain things, so you and I can talk about that. And, okay. And Crystal and Dave, if you have, you want to talk to, to Jeff, there's certain areas of the budget you want to talk about, okay? Yep. Um, <clears throat> 
ARPA funds? Do you have anything we going to move to anything on ARPA funds? Um, no, not directly. Um, I was really focused on the budget last week, so I, I know that there was a request for looking more specifically at the eligibility for premium pay, and um, I, th I think, Crystal, you had a question about salaried workers who would be eligible, and I believe the only one would be the police chief. Um, so I can answer that question, but as far as the total number of eligible throughout town, I haven't done that yet. So, uh, so we, you have, have, when you're talking to other town administra administrators and you're not seeing any type of movement on that where towns are doesn't sporadic, seem to be a lot, right? Yeah. I would say that there isn't, there isn't, um, an overwhelming number, but occasionally, you know, Did once, East Hampton once a week, just do like a small, was that in the paper recently that East Hampton did? I think East Hampton did. Um, I was reading about South Hadley's ARPA, and I don't think that they included premium pay in what they were discussing. Um, like maybe t like a high end number might be like 20 percent right of communities and that might even be really I mean, too I high think that's like probably communities across the state yeah that, that i think 20 20 percent would be what 60 community 70 yeah, probably not even that many though. yeah I, I would say it's because it was 10 maybe like five percent that i'm aware of right it's now tiny. or below yeah um it, it it's not a lot um but but there are definitely some that are and I think that I think that there are communities that um, that that have chosen to use some of those funds. I'm not aware of any community that has maxed out. Um, you know, there's a certain threshold that that the federal government sets a, as a limit, and I haven't. Mo most of what I've seen are smaller um you know one-time stipends or based right, on like the hours of, bonus of yeah yeah yep. so um but I, i'll continue to work on that thank you okay um select board updates other than just the agreement announcement nothing i don't have anything this week anything special no capital budgets uh, meetings this week so Crystal? Personnel committee, I think we're, I think we're there now. Yeah, I would, do you want to, so I'm preparing the memo, but do you want to give the top line or do you want me to? Oh, or? go right ahead. Sure. So the personnel committee met this evening to officially vote to recommend um, a wage adjustments in a two and a half percent COLA um, and an additional uh, small amount for those who have worked 10 or 10 or more years, um, depending on their years of service. Um, there was also a, um, th those were the ma main financial ones, uh, recommendation on the holiday bylaw, Juneteenth is now a state holiday. So adding that, uh, obviously that would have to be a, a Tom meeting vote. Yeah, Warren article. Yeah. Um, also voted to recommend um, adding an uh, adding adding an additional health insurance plan and um, in another HMO Blue Select plan that would basically have the same benefits as the current HMO plan, but a slightly smaller network. It would only be hospitals in Massachusetts. And I think um, Mass General w is not included, and Tufts wasn't. Tufts wasn't. Uh, Dana and Farber. Brigham. Was, Brigham. Thank you. That was that was the other major one. But Bay State, Cooley Dick in this region, um, most of the hospitals are still included. You know, health insurance costs are going up right now, <laughs> and and so um, right, and it, it's just another a, option. Exactly, right. it's a it's, lower cost option. If, it's right. a if lower it cost option if it works for you for employees, and yeah. So, but 
Um, that being said, I'm, it's not going to affect my budget decision because you offer a lower cost solution, you might have more people that join. And so ultimately the cost to the town may go up. So, um, but it's going to give us a better idea moving forward of whether or not to look at increasing the employer share and by how much. So have you, have you, you, you haven't updated the uh, salaries yet in the, uh, the budget? I, I believe I have because I I knew what the personnel committee was going to be voting on and assumed. I think that they say there. Yes. Yes. Uh, that person has worked here for more than 20 years, so that includes uh, a 2.5%. But I will double check that. And it well, I, I guess. It, and, and again, it's we need to somehow make notes. Of, it's like in here it says wage adjustments plus two and a half, but it doesn't say longevity. And I and I yeah. is that is that what the personal committee now is talking about longevity? There's there are small, or there are small you know one time payment. Um, for what do you mean one-time payment well I mean we could put longevity in but that that wasn't a, um, it's not like a monthly payment or a you know I mean it's a yearly but so is it every year or just once yeah so the recommendation was uh, I believe it was 10 10 to 15 years would be eligible for up to two hundred dollars prorated on the actual hours worked. Fifteen to twenty years would be three hundred, and then over twenty years would be five hundred. Is the maximum each year? Each year. Each year. Yeah. In addition. <clears throat> in addition to a call up, but they're now. So, but in, in addition to their wages that are. Kind of no wage increase for those employees because because they through the um, compensation yeah. plan they've already been brought up so but they th get colas they get yes. colas so 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 a cola is an increase of salary mm -hmm. right it's I think the way you want to word it is no non cola increases. Because that's kind of like when when we're discussing like teacher budgets, you have to you have to be careful to, to call you know because a lot of times they kind of don't talk about the cola as if it's an increase because you have steps and everything, so somebody's getting steps and colas. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you have to. So, so you got to be. Okay. It's important to label help, things correctly. Me. So let's say you're the, the the top pay. So if you've been here, you're here. Your your position was graded out at thirty dollars an hour, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So your top. So you may start at twenty four and you work up to thirty. Mm -hmm. Yep. So so now you say you'd get the two and a half. So it'd be thirty plus a two and a half. Yep. So now you, so you're really thirty plus. Yeah, cola. Yeah. cola. So you'd yep. be thirty plus a two and a, two and a half. Mm -hmm. Plus two hundred dollars. That's what it would be. Yep. Mm -hmm. So then the thirties really. So how do you know then that your top end of the scale thirty dollars is is maybe the top end of the scale, but now a person may be paid Over. above that. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Right, because you're. Getting that little bump, and then theoretically, well, no, right, you 20, can be that person. Let's, think, let's say 20, 20, <coughs> 200, 200, 200, 200 for X amount of years, and 300 plus a two and a half. So that's right. It could be exception. Could be a way above that. Right, like above the median, or or above the. So is that fair? Bracket. So I, I think what the personnel committee had talked about when discussing that was that the wage study is a point-in-time study 
and every year the cost of living increases. So, like you said, you start out at 24, by the time you get to 30, the max of the range might actually be 35 or 37. So that would mean that we, so then we're saying we never have to do another correction ever again because our salaries are gonna be keeping up. Well, well, I don't think that you'd never have to do it again. You have to do the study periodically, but you don't know until you do it where you stand. At that Correct. Point. And if you do the study and you find that we're overpaying somebody, we're going to reduce the salaries? No, you won't reduce the salaries, but you will at that point. Again, right, this stop. isn't something that's going to go on for the next 20 years. There's going to come a point again where, and at I'm, that I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. If you if, no, if I, you go up, you have to be able to come down, and 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 you may get. Well, the thing is, you may get to the top of your scale, and and the top of the scale means the top of the scale, right? What was the top of the scale when those wage studies and stuff done? If they did that wage study today, that wouldn't be the top of the scale. Correct. Understood. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, right. I'm just, I'm it just, it, it's, well, it, I mean, if you figure out what a $200 a year addition is, you know, yeah. at an four dollars hour, a, four program. dollars a week. Yeah. Right. At an hourly wage, it's 10, 10 cents, cents an, an hour. hour. 10, 10 cents an hour. Right. So we're, I know. I mean, from a competitive standpoint, it's not likely that generally, Wages never get lowered. Usually, they, there's usually staff cuts. That's usually how you address the situation. Yes. Oh, yeah. If yeah. you're in a financial position where you have to do that. But, you know, it depends yeah. on what the Taking situation away, is. And, and, and again, you've got to be able, to, you gotta be able to, defend your, to defend your position when you go on town meeting floor. We, we said that the other day to Jennifer, didn't we? At, at the senior yeah. center. You, you gotta be able, so I, I'm fine as long as you can explain what, what the thought right. process is. Yeah. I, I don't understand the thought process because if you have, and, and I'm, I'm just saying for me, because if you, yeah. if you set a wage, if you set a, if you set a, if you do a wage review, right, yeah. and, and you're probably not hiring somebody at the top of the scale, you're probably right. hiring, so they can work up to the top of the scale, so I, I just. Well, I don't and, believe we have anybody at the top of the scale. Yeah, I don't think we do either. We don't? Uh, I, think so. I think everybody who's getting longevity is should be at the top of the should be at the top of what the report scale was. What the report scale was, but how old is that report? Two years, three years, mm. uh, four. Yeah, it's four, getting older. Yeah. Next next month, well, right? Well, the, the, well yeah. so the thing. The the re, the re, well, and, and that's a that's a whole different discuss. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I where did it ever say that we would pay the tops of the scale? It didn't. Well, From what are. I read. But well, we are. Right. Could be. Yes, I believe there's well, some people in there that yeah. were at the top of the scale, but not when when I the way I read it, everybody was not at the top of the scale. That's correct. Right, and you could have, and I think it's natural to have somebody who may be at the top of the wherever scale they are, but we definitely had people who were well under. Correct. And, and, and the people who, who, right, who were brought up to that meeting, you know, mid-level, right. the only way they're going to get any further is with something more than a COLA. Right, because unlike... A private sector thing there aren't it's not like you have headroom in that okay I can become right where you not have a lot of growth in the right, position right. right or you don't have a pay band that says you get X to Y and it becomes someone's right choice that says you did a great job this year we're gonna give you an eight thousand dollar pay increase exactly. there's not you don't have that mechanism you don't have that case. mechanism you right. don't have that but it's the same reason we have steps for teachers because you come in and you teach and otherwise if there wasn't any other mechanism uh, well, you other would than get, a cola which and we all know don't always happen so or so it's a, a way to give some parity and there's no way it'll actually be full to the private sector well right like i could go and get 
you know, or I could go and get a promotion for doing something or whatever. Yeah. Whereas we don't necessarily have those kinds of mechanisms in public service. <clears throat> Okay. It is, it's it's easy to forget how all that stuff came about too, you know, because it's been going on for so long. But it's good to it's good to discuss it, so people know where everybody's thoughts are. And again, for me, you, you, if somebody asks you to be able to defend, oh yeah, I mean, in, or explain why that decision was made and what your inputs to the decision were. Absolutely, Davey. Yeah, that, I agree. I, and and again, I just think that it's important that you're mm -hmm. able to to. Ex you know, explain why certain things are happening. So, okay. I just think it's it's interesting. Would not be good if we couldn't. No, I, and and again, I I think that I, I my again some sometimes it's very important that when you sit on a board that there's all the breadth of the discussion it, it can't all be just one way you have to and it in and you don't have to speak your except when you come to vote you don't have to but you should try to understand the complete dichotomy of the subject that you're discussing and this is what and and somebody could say well what does that mean if somebody's getting paid thirty dollars and you're going to go a two and a half percent. Really so you are at the top of the scale. You, you, some people. So the top it, yeah. of the scale would have been increased to two and a, by two and a half percent. Now, so so it would be thirty dollars and plus two and a half. That's the new top of the scale. Right. You're still it's always a moving target in that sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely right. It yep. is a moving target. But it, but this case, it's if if you're at the top of the scale, it would be thirty or thirty dollars an hour plus two and a half percent plus. Right. The two hundred dollars. That's the, and that's going to continue. So that's built a built-in increase. Right. And I I didn't know we were really going to settle on longevity was something that we thought was a good thing, but I guess somehow we have. That should be discussed, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else on uh, updates? Jeff, uh, we got a um, South County EMS meeting tomorrow, so we're going to discuss the uh, budget. Um, that'll be interesting. Um, so we'll do that, and we also have CPA meeting Wednesday. Wednesday, six forty-five. Yeah, and before we go too far, you had kind of said it, but. The warrant articles, we they should be submitted to us, or we should know about them by March eighteenth. Yep. Right. This Friday. Yep. This Friday. Friday. All right. Tom, Mr. Updates. Yep. Um, I'm sorry if I missed this, but I don't think we talked about the Sunderland Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Um, the shoot. Uh, this is a program that the CPA did. I think it was two years ago now yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. to provide rental assistance for families impacted by COVID. Um, there is a fifty thousand dollar award. They haven't spent all the funds yet. They had some recommendations to extend the deadline um, to match the award. There was a limit on the award amounts and to match it based on rent, um, and also to allow it to be paired with other housing subsidies. Um, the CPA, I think it was February 9th was when they met. They met and voted uh, to extend it, and it was co-signed by both the select board and the CPA. So um, just wanted to make sure that the select board didn't have any objections to extending. So so I'd I just like to add something. I, I think the HRA, um, the, again, the, the town... The town smart in their choice that they didn't want the board of select board or the town administrator or any group within the town to run. We we uh, we worked with the, eight, the Frank County Housing Authority to do this, and and they just 
I think this program is an amazing program. Um, and and what, what the HRA did is we, we are actually helping members of our, of, of our communities right now. And their, their, their example, um, but it's kind of a real life thing. They have Sam and Samantha, our married couple, who applied for uh, assistance in May of 2021. They lived in a market rent unit and had minimal support from friends and family. Sam had started a job a few months earlier, but was let go due to business being slow. Samantha was primary caregiver for the 12 year old who needed supervision and support during remote learning. Does this sound familiar to anybody out there? Um, the family had limited savings, which, were, which they saw dwindling. The, the, the RAP program uh, assisted the family with their arrears in August 2021. Sarah, um, provided a stipend of $500 for three months to give the family more time to stabilize their finances. At the time of their application, the family fell at uh, less than 15% AMI and their rent was $1,195. Their only income was from child support payments at $95 weekly. The family's last stipend payment from Sarah went out on October 1st, 2021. By the 21st of October, the family had reapplied for more RAF funding. Their income had stayed the same as it was in May 2021. The family is currently being assisted with a set of three ERAP stipends, which will conclude on March 1. Um, that's that's what we're doing. Um, for some of the residents of Sunderland that have been severely impacted. Um, that's a good thing. And and the, and I'm I'm glad the HRA put this together so that we can understand as a town some of the decisions that we made to help our fellow you know our residents our friends our neighbors I'm and uh, this is this is a good thing so thank you for bringing that up Jeff do I take a vote to sign the contract extension yeah I'll make a motion I second it. Motion made, seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero two. Thank you. And then the last update is just construction started uh, on Riverside Park. They're starting to do the earthworks. Uh, the um, and so some heavy equipment is out there um, on site. So we're excited. That that's Sitting started. in the mud right yes. now. <laughs> Uh, that's all I got for this week. Anything else? Okay, hearing nothing else. Anybody on TV? Nope. Uh, all those in, uh, I'll get an entertain motion to adjourn. A motion, we adjourn. Uh, motion made. We have to, I'll second, I guess. Yeah. We're having so much you fun. You can vote no, Dave. <laughs> no, it's all right. And seconded. Well, I keep looking at that clock. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. You know, I don't think so. Aye. 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 <laughs>